All right, let's create an anime shader that Japanese studios actually use. To make it a little bit easier so you can see what I'm pressing, I'm just going to turn on my screencast so you can see what keys I'm pressing. I'm going to press numpad 1, and once I've done that, uh, we will use this, and we will also press shift A, uh, mesh, and we will also use a UV sphere, G, X, right click, shade smooth, right click, shade smooth. Once we've done that, we're going to switch to our shader editor. And with our shader editor selected on our first object, uh, we can start make letting the magic happen. Now we're going to change to our render view, and we're using Eevee. The only thing I want to adjust quickly is just the light. Um, and the best way to do this is just to bring this out like that. Press numpad 7. And let's change the light settings to a spotlight. Put this on maybe 4,000. And uh, we might adjust this later, but we're just going to do this. And we're going to look through the camera lens. There we go, that's okay. And numpad 1 for front orthographic view. And we are good to go. All right. And just to make sure they're not too close together, G, X, that where their shadows aren't affecting each other. All right, so uh, let's start at the very top. So let's start with the basics. Um, so I'm just going to select this, delete it, and then press Shift A, search, and we're going to use a diffuse VSDF, diffuse shader, right? We're going to con connect this to a shader to RGB. Shader to RGB, boom, just like that. And we're going to keep these lines nice and neat. And then we're going to connect this color into the factor of a color ramp. Uh, yeah, we go. And by the way, I've got Node Wrangler. I'm not too sure if it, if it means anything, just a heads up. If you don't have it uh, in your add-on section, you just type in Node Wrangler and make sure that's enabled. Cool. Right, and then once we've got that done, uh, we just need to change this to constant. And uh, we have to choose our colors, yeah? And uh, I think we need to choose three colors. So we're going to click on this again. And we're going to make this the middle color. We'll change this later on for more customization. Uh, this is very customizable, so that should be fine. And that should be good. And then once we've done that, we want to connect this to a multiply vector math. What is it a vector math? No, I think it's just a m no, it's a vector math. Oh, there's a better way to do this. In fact, if you've got Node Wrangler, I'll show you. It's a lot easier. Uh, or it becomes the, the default way you do things. So I'm just going to connect this in like this so you can see what we've got so far. So we've got these three colors here that we can kind of adjust, right? And I'm just going to select this, press new, copy this. In fact, I'm just going to go over here and put material here. So whatever I do here, it does it for both so you can see. Right, so it's a three color shader at the moment and we wanted it to be a four bit shader. We want dark shadow, light shadow, the normal color and then our highlight area. Right, let's quickly do the highlight area. So we're going to use a specular for the highlight area, specular BSDF, and we're going to connect this to a shader to RGB again. And once again, I like to have these lines nice and neat. And we're going to connect the color to a math node, not vector math, just normal math. So I'm just going to type in greater than math. There we go. That's what I want. And after that, we can now, for this to work, you have to make sure you've got Node Wrangler enabled. This needs to be ticked, turned on. And if it's turned on, uh, as you can see what keys I'm pressing here, um, I'm going to, I believe it's, is it Shift and then do this? No, it's Alt and Shift, and then you want to hold down right click and drag it all the way like that. Not left click, but right click and release. And this creates that mix, which is great. Uh, we do want to change this to, uh, oh, that's fine. We want to change this to that. And we want to change this to that. See, now we can see the colors. Now, if you only want to see this effect, we can go over here to greater than. And uh, 
I believe it's con uh, sh shift, control shift click. So control shift click will let us see just this. And we can adjust this um, accordingly just to make sure it's correct. So this allows us to get it nice and small, which is great. So let's leave it on two for now. You can adjust it accordingly, what you think is good. And once we've done with that, we can just delete that and we're back here and we can see how it looks so far. Let's connect that over here. Boom. So this is what we have so far. So this isn't enough yet because normally this is all the procedural elements, but it's got none of the core part. The core part being the actual texture images that you want to use in your scene. So for that, uh, we can just... Uh, Add it. So I believe it's search texture input. Um, oh, I'm having a brain fart. Um, so let's let's use texture coordinates. And you'd normally do this a lot quicker with Node Wrangler, but uh, is what it is. I press shift a search we're going to use a value we're going to connect this to uh, the UV to mapping and we're going to connect it to the vector and we're going to connect this value to the scale so that we can affect all three of them over here to get them the right size and what I did over here is I just use ChatGPT or you can Google an image you want. I use ChatGPT to create this brick wall and it's going to be a bit more shinier than usual because I'm showing you the full shader here. So just keep that in mind. So to add it in your scene, uh, all you need to do is now uh, you want to connect this. So you'll connect it over here to an image texture. There we go. Let's get this nice and neat. And you can just use, and basically all you have to do is select open and select your image. As you can see, GPT-4 uses DALI, so we've got it there, which is good. And then over here, we want to uh, control shift and just, hold on, it's control shift. Let's try that again. Um, Pardon me, it's control shift, but instead of left click, it's right click and drag and, and you get that. Then we get this mix over here, right? But instead of mix, we want to change this to multiply. Where is multiply? Do, 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 do. Mix, value, color, hide, divide, subtract, exclude, difference. So I can see. There we go, it is there. My screen's just a little bit smaller than what I'm using for recording. And uh, put the factor to one. And we will connect this to the surface. And we will adjust this accordingly as we go. And let's just try and get this a little bit neater. So if we have this over here, one thing we want to do, because we've got Node Wrangler enabled, we can press Shift, and we can just right click down like that to create a reroute node. And then we can select this and press G, and we can just keep these lines nice and neat. And we are almost done. And then we can just adjust the values. So the one thing that we don't see at the moment, if we click on this, we're not seeing this image because it's on zero here. Let's put this on one. There we go. So now that we see it there, we can go back here and connect this result to the outer surface. There we go. And we are pretty much done now. We can just adjust the value of this to maybe this case too looks correct so obviously we're not doing UV unwrapping in this example that's for another time but you can see it's perfectly aligned and if we want to change the bricks dimensions for like a square which would be a surface you'd likely use this on uh, we should be able to just to, uh, change the rotation I think it's the z-axis let's do 90 
minus 90. Yeah, and there you have it. It's as simple as that. And now to test out the, the lighting, uh, we can adjust things now. We could say um, we need to keep in mind the perspective of the light source. So if we are aligned with this light source and we understand this is what the light source is shining on, and we, we have to consider what would be a natural look. Obviously, it's all about artistic opinion. We can adjust this accordingly. By doing this, unfortunately, I'm not seeing any. There we go. And then for this dot of here that we see in front of us, which is like the uh, light that's shining, we can adjust the size here. Make it smaller if you want. And uh, yeah, and I'll just to demonstrate that it does work. Numpad 7, Shift A, we will just use a uh, empty and we will use a circle and then we'll press R, X, rotate on the X axis 90 degrees, S5, then select the light source and select the empty, press Control P and parent it. Numpad 7, and now what we want to do is just look at this through a render view and we will adjust the render settings further just to demonstrate it but we are pretty much done um, one thing I want to do in the world settings is just make this all black so the focus is on the shot which is important um, and then we also want to get the timeline over here so we can actually animate this rig uh, timeline and we go in here we've got the we're going to call this uh, light rig and we'll press I for location, rotation, and scale. And then at 120, we want to rotate this 360 degrees. But we also want to press numpad 1 and rotate this 360 degrees and press I. Click and then press I. And we can end this here at 120 and then we can just look at this to the camera viewport and when we press play we should be able to see how the light changes and we're going to see we see there's an issue here and I think the issue is G um, Y issue is that it's just overlapping that's all so you can see it's, it's working perfectly it's a great anime shader and it's something you'd see in productions in Japanese anime. And you can adjust everything. You could say, you know what, I actually want this to be a little bit darker. And then you can just play around with this and decide what you think is appropriate for whatever you're working on. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.